Okay, we're giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Once again, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect. Alright, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the uh 18 nations, alright? So uh we're gonna do kind of similar how we did last time, but more so we're gonna go into the captivity and showing that these nations are not going into uh be joint rulers in the kingdom that they can't get salvation ultimately you know we're gonna go into the ones individually to the best of our ability you know of course out of the 18 nation you have the nation of israel which the nation of israel was given the promises through abraham isaac and jacob all right now then you had jacob's twin twin brother which was esau which is number two on the list matter of fact let me see the paper you know which is number two on the list the so-called white man all right which his birth name, his birth name was Esau, Aishashua, all right? Aishashua means wasted away is he, all right? Now, his brother gave him the name Edom because for two reasons, uh, a nomen omen as well, and also two, because he wanted that red pottage, so Esau, I'm sorry, Jacob gave him that name as like, a, you know, as a nickname. Oh, he called him Red. All right. Now, the reason why I say his name is a Nomen Omen is because when you look at the color red, which another word for red or another form of red is crimson. Now, the word crimson, right, goes back to the word crime. Now, when you go back to the word crime, it goes back to, to transgress. And when you go into transgress, that means to cross over. All right. So he that's why he is known as the people of my curse. Now, I got this, some scriptures I'm going to go into. Start off with him. This is Esau. This is uh, Genesis 25. We start at 23. All right. And by the way, uh, Edom or Adawam stems from the root word Adam, which means red. All right. Now, sometimes you may see in the scriptures, you may see Idumia, which Idumia is the Greek version of Edom. Or you may see Teman. Uh, what's some other ones? Um, you got Teman. Dan. Well, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. The Dan is kind of uh, funny, you know, because yeah. there's different the Dan's. What would you say, Amalek? Amalek, yeah. Amalek. That's a good one, you know. Cause there's different there's different people that come out of the dance, so you gotta kind of, you know, discern. But I'm gonna just go to this is Genesis 25, uh, verse 23, that says, "And Yahweh said unto her, We all know the story about uh, Rebecca having the twin sons, and she talked about you know the wrestling within her womb. And then verse 23 says, And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separate from thy bowels." And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the el elder shall serve the younger. See, now the elder is going to serve the younger. Now we know that's not happening right now based upon who Esau is and who Edom is. Right now, the younger is serving the elder. But in future prophecy, when you go to 2 Numbers 6 and 7, which I'll just get that real quick while I mentioned it. You know, 2 Numbers chapter 6, verse 7. It's another way of proving who Esau is the, today as well. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac and Jacob and, and Esau were born. Of him Jacob had held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right, because that's the time frame when Jacob is going to be ruled. The elder is going to serve the younger. All right, Jacob is going to be ruling over Esau. Now that proves right there that there's no there's no repentance for Esau, and that should ring a bell right there. So we're going to go to Hebrews, right? Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter twelve, right? Yep, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know 
how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Right? So that's the point. There's no repentance for Esau. So therefore, Esau can't get into the kingdom, man. The scripture says, Jacob have I love, but Esau have I hated. All right? So that's the only nation that the Most High has not given any mercy unto. In fact, when you read Obadiah, you know, I'm going to be brief with Esau because we can go all day on Esau. You know, because brothers should know about Esau already. Mainly this is really for, you know, tackling the other nations specifically. All right? We want to cover every every particle. Now, it says, uh, verse 17, Obadiah, verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall be possessed shall possess their possession. What is that? That's servitude. All right? And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, <clears throat> for Yahweh hath spoken it. That's plain and simple, man. That's plain and simple. All right, now I, want to, I do want to get this real quick. This is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, what is that? What is that? Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. It says, For my sword, no, we start at 4, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And that's talking about thermonuclear fire, man. That mushroom cloud, all right? It says, And their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine, and the falling fig from the tree. For my sword, meaning that's that thermonuclear bomb, the ICBM missile, shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Now, when you go in, see, that's why brothers got to do a due diligent research on these on these words, you know, and on these nations, because Idumia, like I said earlier, is the Greek word for uh, Edom. You'll see as we go along that Esau... Basically, a lot of terminology for the nations that are on there are really the Greek terminologies as opposed to what their name is in Hebrew, translated. Translated from Hebrew to English as opposed to Greek to English. All right? It says, And upon the people of my curse to judgment, talking about Idumia, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of rams, for the Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra, in a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Basra is a chief city in is um, in Edom. All right, and again it said in Idumia. So the Most High is going to have a great sacrifice with these people. So therefore, there's no uh, uh, salvation for them. All right, you got the next one. Yeah, yeah. The next um, nation is. Uh the next nation is uh, Elam, all right? So um, the Hebrew word for Elam is Ayalam, which it means uh, young in the Hebrew. And those people today, they dwell over there in the area of the, the uh, Asia, uh, mainly, you know, Pakistan, East India, or, or India, you know, um, Afghanistan, those areas. Um, they're also known as the Persians. So they go by the name of the Persians, and that's mentioned in the scriptures. Now, I got a scripture in uh, the book of Jeremiah, the, the 49th chapter, where this is Jeremiah prophesying. He prophesies against the nations, you know, and in particular, he's prophesying against Elam. So it says, uh, this is Jeremiah 49, verse 35. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief. No, I'm, let me read up verse 34. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. So here's, here's the Lord speaking against the nation of Elam. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their mighty, the chief of their might, and upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them towards all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. 
For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from this the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Yeah, so um, in the latter days, the Lord said he's going to bring the captivity uh, again of Elam. So basically, Elam is going into captivity in the latter days. You know? Right. And that's it. Uh, yeah, the, next <coughs> the next one is Assyria. I got I to gotta get the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Assyria. Lot. Yeah, it's right here. I wrote this down, man. And this is uh, the Hebrew word for Assyria is a is a is a sure, and a sure. No, it's right here. It's Asha war. Oh, so look, Asha war. Oh yeah, Asha war. And Asha War, uh, oh, I said it says a step. No, uh, remember, break it down. What is Ash? Oh, oh, Ash, <coughs> Ash is fire, and the war is is light. So Asha War means uh, fire, fire, light. Fire and uh, light. Fire and light. Right. What, what scriptures you got? But Isaiah ten and five. This is Isaiah ten verse five. O Assyria, the rod of of mine anger, and of the end of the staff in their hand is mine in indignation. I will send them against the hip 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 hypocritical, hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. I will give him a cha a change, a charge to take the spoil, and to take the prey, and to tr try them to tr to tread them down like the myrrh of the street. And to try them means to to stomp uh, violently. You know, to like actually, to like if you stomp in someone's brains out, try them, try them down like the myrrh in the street. How be it the merchant, the merch? Oh, how be it he meaneth, he mean, meaneth not so, neither doeth the heart think so. But more so, the, uh, the judgment on Assyria is the, to be trodden down in the street. Um, Read verse 17. This is Isaiah 10 and 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and the Holy One of a flame, and it shall burn and, sh and devour his throne and his, his, uh, his berries in the one, in his, uh, this is this, at the end of 17. In his briars and in his one day. And and that's talking about Israel going, being taken over Assyria. All right, so Assyria doesn't have any any place in this. And so the Assyrians, who they are today, you know, which Assyria basically was amongst the Chaldean, not amongst the Chaldeans, amongst Babylon. All right, uh, the great city Nineveh, that's in Babylon. So they were mixed and mingled amongst the Hamites, and they also too they come from uh, Shem. All right, what's the next one? Uh, Syria. So the next one is Syria, and the Hebrew word is Aram. Meaning exalted. Um, and I got a few scriptures on that. I'll start at 2 Kings 
6 and 8, but it says, uh, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Now, the, the, the point in that, it says, it, The king warred against Israel, you know? And so, uh, what I got in Obadiah, uh, Obadiah 1 and 16, it says, For ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they have not been. Now it says, they shall drink. Uh, it says, they, since they drunk upon my holy mountain, like put us in slavery, you know, or, or you know, pretty much touch the apple of the most high eye, so will, so will it pretty much happen to them. Now I got another uh, precept, uh, Isaiah 7 and 8, where it says, uh, For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it, that it be not a people. Now the point in that scripture is Syria is uh, Damascus, you know, which uh, Syria is Damascus as well. Right. Which, Damascus is basically the chief city of Syria. Right. Like, like when you see Zion in the scriptures, you see it represents Israel. You see Jerusalem in the scriptures, it represents Israel. When you see Damascus in the scriptures, it represents Syria. Right. So, which will, which will go in with this scripture, uh, Jeremiah 49, and I'll start at 23, when it says, uh, Concerning Damascus, her mouth is confounded, and are pat, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is wax feeble, and turned herself to flee. And fear have seized her. Anguish and sorrow have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in the streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palace of Benedad. And Benedad was uh was one of the kings of Syria, you know, and it said it will uh consume the palace of it. So, you know, that's judgment on Syria. What, what book you reading from again? Jeremiah. Right. 49. Right, right. Now, when Benadad was around, yeah, let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when Ben, if I'm not mistaken, give me a second. Huh. When Benadad was around, Jeremiah, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Jeremiah, yeah, Benadad, let me see, Jeremiah, you got Jeremiah, way later right let me double check Jeremiah yep yep yeah Jeremiah was yeah a lot later right Jeremiah was a lot later from uh, uh, during the time of uh, of uh, then, then the time of Benadad Benadad was during the time of uh, uh, Elisha you know and that's before both captivities went into, uh, yeah, before the Assyrians even came into power. Because the Assyrians was trying to get into power before the Assyrians when you read Second Kings. All right. And then now when you fast forward Jeremiah's time frame, basically they got it according to, this is Zonovan for Compact Bible Dictionary. They got it going, you know, towards the time of, uh, you know, after uh, Zedekiah, the rest, to, between, between Babylon and um, Persia, what it means between the between that time frame, you know. So that probably just because it say Ben Haddad doesn't mean it's actually talking about Ben Haddad. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, like 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 Salakim. So when, when we say we're gonna the Tabernacles of David is gonna be raised up, you know. Even though we know it's talking about back then that time frame, but we you know David's not around now. You know, there were certain times in frame, time frame where David wasn't around. Right. But they still made reference to the time frame of David. You know? So, ben Dad was one of the great kings of Syria. So, we're going to, you know, you make reference. We're going to say, look, we're going to take you down like we did ben Dad. That's right. You know? Same concept. 
You know, Ben, ben the dad ain't gonna raise up no more. Alright? But and just to get all the uh-huh. uh, to lock you to get all the meat off the bone of Syria, uh, I just got one more scripture. Uh second Ezra sixteen and one. It says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloth and sack and hair. Be well your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. And we know woe means destruction. You know, and you know, Syria was a part of that. You know, so the, hey, that's 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 all on Syria. You know. Right. Give me one second. We want something. Brothers are showing me something. Because if I'm, because this is saying Ben's dad was a place. So if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I thought it was one of the kings. No, he was the king. Yeah. Right. Right. But this is saying, oh, places of Ben's dad. That that place from which so many evils and such cruelty to Israel. Em, emanated, yeah. Thus implying the cause of Damascus overthrow, not the not the Benadad of Second Kings thirteen and three, Amos one and four. It was common name of serious kings. Oh, see, like like the pharaohs, right? So like when we say, oh, you want to take down the pharaohs, or another one is Xerxes, you know? Titles. Yeah, those they're basically the titles. So Benadad is just a title of kings. Of the Assyrians, no, the Assyrians. Did you went into a rum, right? Did you go into a rum? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that was the that was the he, Hebrew meaning. Right, 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 right. Ultimately, because that's when it, what we got to do. That might be another uh, uh, a video, but I believe Syria is another name, a Greek way of saying a rum. Okay. Because it, it's basically, basically I say that because when you look at Babylon, or you look at Kush, you have Ethiopia. When you look at, when we're going to go into uh, Pawat or Put, you have Libya. When you look at Lud, it's Libya. You see that, that Dia is very common when it comes to Greek terminology. So that's why I say that. And why would it have two definitions in the first place? You see what I'm saying? Well, why would it have two titles? Is what I'm right? Con. So the, yeah, yeah. You got, you got some information on it? No, not that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. All right, so we can go to the next one. Well, that's me, Salakia. What we got? Uh, next one. Yeah, Ishmael. Yash, which is Yashamayala. Yashamayala, as we know, is what, who? One of the sons of Hagar, right? The son of Hagar, which was, the, his father was Abraham, right? Now, the thing was, remember that Sarah was make, being haste. She, she was like, look, I I want you know I want I want to bring a, a child you know I want I want to bring a child forth for Abraham you know but she was being hey so she used her bondwoman Hagar to bring forth a child a son Ishmael you know and he, basically he was denied so I'm I'm gonna prove that so this is gonna prove that he he is not the child of the promise or he's not inheriting the kingdom you know so what Ishmael again means Yashamayala you know. Now another one where you will see is um, Kedar, which is one of the sons of uh, 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 Ishmael. You know, just like when you might see, oh, uh, um, you might see Joseph, which we know that represents Israel. You know, one of the tribes. You know, you got uh, 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 Judah. You might see Judah. You know, which represent ultimately represents Israel. You know, um, so. This is, uh, let me go back a little further. This is, uh, here we go. Now, this is, uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And the Most High said, or the power said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear the, the son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Right. Shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he be shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, 
Now, this is another good reason why it's good to go into these nations individually because, remember, Jeremiah was a prophet sent unto the nations. Now, for you to be a prophet unto the nations, you have to have an understanding of the nations and have an understanding of what the Most High is telling the nations. So, if I come, if a guy comes up and be like, look, you are, uh, he saying that he believes in the scriptures and he can be saved, I can be like, no, you are Elamite. Right. All right? Now, let's make reference to, in the scriptures, what is the judgment for Elam? Or what is the judgment for whoever? The Syrians. Or you're a Syrian. Or you're a Syrian. You should be able to go into the scriptures and be like, look, boom, boom, boom. This is what's going to happen to you individually. All right? Now, that's one point. Now, let me go back. To, I got some notes here. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, now I, I got a good one. I got a good one. This is uh, Isaiah 60, which we know the people that are learned in the scriptures know that what? Isaiah 60 is, is a future prophecy on how the kingdom is going to be, right? So let's see what it says. Isaiah 60 and 7. Remember now, one of the sons of Ishmael is who? Uh, Kedar. So when you see Kedar, you know it's making reference to Ishmael. It says, all the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance of mine altar on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Right. Why is that? Because Ishmael is going to be in servitude to us. That's why the scriptures say that the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The, the gates shall be opened continually. Now, what is Kedar going what is Ishmael going to bring to the table? He's going to bring forth his flocks. You know? Uh, I got, let me get another one. Some little juicier. Uh, right. Now, Salakia, another word for, uh, Ishmael when you see in the scriptures is Arabia. So you're going to see different things. You may see different words. And one of them is Arabia. <sighs> Excuse me, Salakia. Now, uh, uh, uh. It says, uh, Jeremiah, I'm going to get Jeremiah chapter 49 uh, and 28, right? Now, a good thing I want to make reference to, if brothers want to go further into this, Jeremiah 46, 47, 48, and 49 tackles a lot of the nations, all right? Um, also to Jeremiah 25, 14 through 28, which we'll probably get some of these, Zephaniah 2 and 11, Amos the first chapter and the second chapter. All right, Psalms 111, Psalms 83 towards the end, we might get that, you know, because Psalms 83 lists, lists all the nations, but at the end it says judgment for all these nations, right? Because remember, they took confederacy against us, mm -hmm. and it sort of lists nations individually, but then there's a judgment at the end. Uh, what am I getting? I'm sorry, Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 23 and it reads concerning Damascus Hamath is confounded I did that before my bad I did that before why is this right hold up brother 28 my bad my bad Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 28 concerning Kedar and concerning the kingdoms of Hazar which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite, thus saith Yahweh, Arise ye, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. The tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains, and all their vessels, and all and their camels. See? Now, we always talk about the camel-eating Arabs, right? The Ishmaelites. And they shall cry unto them, fears on every side, flee. Go you far off, dwell deep, O ye inhabitants of Hazar, saith Yahweh, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath taken counsel against you, and hath con conceived a purpose against you. Arise, get you up unto the wealth wealthy nation, and dwell with the, dwelleth without care, saith Yahweh, which dwell alone, and their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their of their cattle a spoil, and I will scatter into all the and all winds them that are in the uttermost corners and I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof saith Yahweh and Hazar shall be a dwelling for dragons and a desolation forever 
there shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. Well, the thing I wanted to mention is that if you look at a, 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 um, I just say this, everything is reincarnated. I pretty much I, I'll say that, you know.